going to just space it for around the uh, bypass vestibule. Just to, and then put the carbon felt carbon felt on the outside of it. All right, we're gonna get this carbon felt sewn up because it only comes in. Well, I can only get it in small pieces at uh, Home Depot. So I've got to make a uh, few cuts and sew some seams so I can get it around the um, chimney through the tent unit that I'm making. Alright, I'm trying to just make a continuous loop on this so that when it's cold um, and your dexterity is down, you won't have much of an issue. Uh, last night when I was doing it, I noticed it was pretty cold and my fingers didn't want to do much, so I'm thinking we're going to make this sleeve that slides over the um, small piece of coagulated aluminum that I formed and then um, we can just slide this over it and uh, attach a piece of velcro to the outside just to make sure that it doesn't fall so I think that's what we're going to do through the fabric um, unit you're going to have a convective loop where the um, there's going to be a heat exchange here rising out introduction of colder air coming through so that's going to cool off the uh, aluminum pipe and the carbon felt will be attached to the outside like such and a um, small piece of velcro just to compress it lightly and then of course the uh, it'll go through the zipper and you've got that air transfer and uh, I think we're gonna be fine I mean last night it worked and we didn't even have something as nicely set up as this make sure you uh, snip these edges so you can slide the sleeve over better um, it'll, it'll just catch if you don't so just give it a little slice and a little crimp and you're all set up we've got it crimped and uh, felt slides on be certain to make sure that the uh, rain guard will be um, wide enough to ensure that um, if it does rain that you're not getting uh, too much seepage into your vestibule. Well that uh, through the tent transfer unit there is working incredible. Hey guys it's up suitable. Um, this is the, R the REI Hoodoo 3 and this is what the chimney setup looks like when um, you have it installed. So what I'm going to do is take it apart for uh, my boy Sim Dog who wants a closer look at the chimney setup so he can make one and show you the uh, mods. I added a couple of extra mods onto it uh, just to help it uh, be a little safer in the tent. Be back with you in a second. Hey guys, how, how you doing? Sim Dog, this is um, how I put the chimney together. Um, I think this is a uh, one of the larger soft drink caps so you're getting it from like a monster can this is one of your uh, gutter guards that you can get at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot and it's it, it's adjustable you can do pretty much anything you want with it so you kind of slide this uh, Mountain Dew can down that you've modified and it slides between that and a coddle bottle and you can unroll it and store it inside the uh, inside the keg and it's very adjustable so it's the way I went a little bit of a kind of a rain guard also have another another guard if it's really pouring out that you can add over this which is just pretty much some uh, tooling foil um, at this height you're not going to need any steel cans so you're better off going with um, with uh, these cans with the aluminum cans up on top so this this diet Mountain Dew has just been cut and then just the size around the coddle bottle and what happens is it compresses this onto it and you've got some adjustability on height but it pretty much locks it in. Then a couple of coddle bottles that uh, that you're using in the chimney. Here is also an extra, extra Sapporo can if you need to elevate the um, chimney pipe 
or if you need to extend out of the stove to get out further out of your vestibule, um, have an extra support working in here. What I did for the uh, through the tent um, unit was basically some Kevlar, uh, I'm sorry, some carbon felt, which is right here. So I've got a piece of carbon felt, the same stuff that we use in the alcohol stoves. A piece of Velcro, just to, just to um, make sure that it doesn't slip off um, while you're using the stove. I haven't had any trouble with it. We burned it for, uh, I don't know, five or six hours in the tent. And this is just uh, a coddle bottle and a piece of uh, aluminum flashing. Uh, I think these are one inch panels. They're folded. Um, like an accordion and riveted with steel uh, rivets and if you need to go over um, if you need the if you need the transfer application to go over a fatter can you can just uh, open these pleats up a little bit stretch it you can leave them a little tighter for the coddle bottles or stretch them out and then retighten them if, if the situation changes so it's pretty uh, it gives you a lot of latitude in, in the diameter that you're going to use I continue on down the chimney with a couple of coddles and once again, this coddle is fit onto um, a steel juice can that came from uh, like an Asian juice drink. And what I do is put a regular Pepsi can aluminum sleeve over it. And this nestles, you can see in the top here, that this will nestle right into the juice can. So this flanged end, um, tapered end, I'm sorry, will go directly into that other can and I just raises this a little to lock it in place. And there you go, it's locked in place. So it's a couple of more coddles. This is a like a V8 can, cut in half um, and cut the end out. And that's just used to, it slides up and down this juice can just to hold this coddle bottle in place because you're gonna start changing diameters and cans. This juice can, um, fruit juice can, fits directly into a Sapporo can. And that goes right into the uh, Sapporo cans. So now we get down a little further. And for you guys that are gonna make, this is pretty pretty much the, the hardest part to make. If you're gonna make this tea, I'm gonna take it apart just to show you that when it, as soon as it heats up, it seals, it seals completely. But it's two Sapporo cans, and that's the type of cut that you've gotta make on it. All right, that was done with just tin snips. And because it's a flared can, um, it compresses together <laughs> it doesn't even leak and that's what it looks like on the inside okay the mod that I made to the stove was I wanted a little longer legs just to make it a little safer in the tent I had no trouble with the legs melting off I had steel steel six inch hex hex nuts five sixteenths by eighteenth twist on here and it worked fine and the um, I had the matching T nuts um, but what happened was I wanted longer legs just so it would be a little safer on the bottom even if I'm using Reflexit and I um, decided to go with uh, some alumin aluminum tubing but of course you get, this, this allows you for adjustment right here so if the ground's unlevel you can, you can, they just self level also there's a little bit of steel here so that the heat that's transferring from the unit is gonna come down the T-nut and onto the steel and kind of dissipate. And the aluminum isn't gonna be in direct contact with the with the um, mini keg itself. So, and we have this disc here, um, which is steel, and that's gonna help dissipate some heat before that heat gets transferred down to the aluminum. Also gonna add a couple of holes in the aluminum so that it cools, it'll be uh, more self-cooling. Um, there's a little bit of JB Weld here. They fit pretty snugly, but you're gonna have to JB Weld it. And all the pressure is going downward, so there's no issue with um, rigidity or structural stability with uh, this design. In fact, it makes it much safer. Look at how high it sits off the, off the tent. It's a lot safer. Um, you're gonna get more heat um, that's just kinda gonna be convected out of the area. You have an option now with this, with this height to add a small, um, like the iPod fans or one of those small beach fans or a laptop fan on a nine volt to kind of move the heat around if that's what you're into. It's an option, just another option depending on the type of uh, hiking you're doing or camping, whatever. 
and I think that's the only other modification I, I made was increasing the um, leg height um, you have an option of using the reflex it on the um, on, uh, on the tent surface and that's the chimney setup so the most important key to the um, to going through the tent or the vestibule or if you're just going to do a through the zipper application the most important part is is the the carbon felt um, and I did notice that the felt got hot but it would it would you know dissipate the heat quite well and the zippers and the nylon had no issues at all but I did notice that you could feel the warmth on the carbon felt as soon as I added this air baffle um, so that this was not in direct contact with the chimney as soon as I added the air baffle the carbon felt actually stays cool to the touch and your tent is safe so um, you still got to exercise caution but that's what I did if you have any more questions just send them to me and I'll try to get uh, get some answers out to you and in the process of putting together a, a, um, a list for a couple of the guys on the parts that are needed to actually make this so the only thing we've got left to do is put a cap on this end but um figuring on hanging that off the back of the pack anyways so if you want to know if everything really fits in here it really does carbon felt velcro gutter cap all the legs the uh, air baffle for the chimney and the full chimney for this tent so it does fit in here is it hard to put in there yeah it takes a minute it's not hard um, easy to come out and when you put it in you just kind of just keep telescoping things until they fit you probably won't put it in the same exact way every time but the two Sapporo cans always go on the bottom and the other two on top peace gotta love this gear rack but there's that heater right there get some uh in my gloves so you can tell that it's um it's not that big gotta love this thing